Okay, my little savages, welcome back. We're going to talk about limitations of kettlebell training. Now, you know I love kettlebells. You know I love kettlebells. Kettlebell is an awesome tool. In terms of total body training, you might think, what can the kettlebell not do? It seems to be able to do everything. It's just amazing. It can't, for example, cook a steak. It also can't iron your shirt. It can't drive your car. So there's a lot of things the kettlebell can't do. But let's talk about relevant limitations. What are some relevant fitness limitations that you'll almost certainly encounter if you try to train exclusively with kettlebells? And some people do try to do that. They try to say, I'm just, I'm just going to train with kettlebells. That's all I'm going to do. And I'm just going to eat sauerkraut. People who just want to do just one thing. I'm just going to do kettlebells. And I'm going to do sauerkraut. My life is going to be perfect. I admire minimalism. You know that. But minimalism, my friends. Minimalism is doing the fewest, most fundamental things that you need to reach your goal as effective and efficiently as possible. Minimalism, let us remember, is not just doing very little for the sake of doing very little. And sometimes it makes sense to do a little bit more. And I think when it comes to kettlebells, even though they can cover a lot of bases, they can't cover all the bases. And so sometimes it makes sense to do a little bit more. Let's talk about those limitations. And let's talk about what that little bit more is as soon as I have a sip of coffee from my Ninja Turtle smock. Oh. Mm, that is so refreshing. So I already did a, a short, a reel on this, but let me just build on some of the points. If you try to train exclusively, exclusively with kettlebells, you're likely to encounter three, I think, significant enough limitations. Number one, let's start with number one, because, or we could start with number three. I think it makes sense to start with number one. Overhead or horizontal pulling. <laughs> what, 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 what? Um... Yeah, pretty obvious, right? You can't really do overhead pulling with a kettlebell. Now, you can do horizontal pulling. You can do rows, and that's great. But the overhead pulling, you just you can't do it with a kettlebell. You just can't. And now, look, you can hang a kettlebell around your waist if you're doing pull-ups, but that's that's not really something. That doesn't count, all right? This doesn't count. Okay. Uh, now, I think this is a significant limitation because I think uh, vertical pulling is a really important movement pattern, and I'm a huge fan of pull-ups. I'm a huge fan of chin-ups. I'm a huge a fan of hanging. Obviously, Dan John is a big fan of these things as well. Uh, they're awesome exercises, and I think it's it it sucked to miss out on them entirely if you train just exclusively kettlebells. Is the world going to end if you never do overhead pulling? No, but I think if you have the option to do it, you should definitely incorporate that into your training plan. So what's the fix? Well, it's easy. You get a pull-up bar, right? Uh, and you don't need anything fancy or expensive. You know, for years and years, I used the basic door uh, door frame pull-up bars, excuse me, uh, you know, like that, that Iron Gym thing. I don't know if that brand is still around anymore. You could get a, a standing free structure with uh, pull-ups and dips. They're not, they're not too bad. In fact, if you get one of those, it will solve a problem that we're talking about later. Uh, and, and, then, and then you've got an awesome a solution there. Inexpensive, still very minimalist. You can train at home. Obviously, if you go to a gym, you, you'll have no problem finding something to hang from there. Uh, and you'll fill that gap. You'll fill that obvious gap of uh, of vertical pulling. Uh, and then, yes, uh, you can wait, uh, wait it with a kettlebell at some point. And I do recommend if you're training pull-ups to, you know, that's what you should do uh, sooner. Once you have a couple of pull-ups, like once you can do five pull-ups, it's time to start training weighted pull-ups. Uh, I'll, I sometimes have clients uh, to do weighted training pull-ups, even when they just have two pull-ups. Uh, the sooner you can add additional resistance, the stronger you're going to get. It's a topic for another day. Okay, so that's the first limitation. Overhead vertical pulling, easy solution. You get a pull-up bar of some, some sort. It's worth, it's that's worth a little bit extra, trust me. Okay, second limitation. If you haven't noticed, the kettlebell doesn't give a whole lot of love to your calves. Uh, the feet, the ankles, the calves. Now you get kind of some nice foot stuff if you train, you know, old school and barefoot and you're gripping the ground. Uh, but you know, when it comes to kettlebell training, we often say there's not really a whole lot of wrists and ankles in, in kettlebells. And so the calves can fail to get a, a good amount of love you'll get a little bit here you know you know with um certain exercises you know if you're doing lunges and, and get-ups uh but i think this is a limitation of kettlebell training and i what's your what's your solution pat are you just gonna are you just a problems person i want a solutions man all right here's your solution it's like ten dollars a jump rope get a jump rope jump rope is an amazing complement to kettlebell training it's awesome in general uh, I was sort of brought up with jump rope and kettlebells in a martial arts environment. We would always do this. Here's a cool workout for you. It's called the old school lead in. So this is a workout that my old uh, bare knuckle boxing coach used to put us through pretty much before every class. This was our 
This was our lead in, hence the old school lead in. We would jump rope. No, sorry. We would swing. We would swing a kettlebell for 30 seconds. We would then jump rope for a minute, and then we would hold a plank for a minute. Sometimes the amount of time uh, for each exercise would change, but generally it was that. We would swing, get a real explosive effort. We would jump rope, kind of do that active recovery, and then we would hold the plank. And my, my coach would have us do this because he'd say, hey, we're kind of mimicking the different rigors that you'll experience in a fight. You have those explosive boom, boom, boom efforts to swing. Uh, you have the, you know, the active recovery, the dancing around, the, 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 the important foot movement, all that sort of thing. And then you have the clinch, right? So when we were doing the, the plank, he would always emphasize, we better be so tight, right? We are trying to strangle the ground. Abs are super braced. Think we're, we're clinching with the ground. Uh, I still love that routine, but you kind of need a jump rope to do it, but that's okay because that will fill a gap in your kettlebell training. Uh, it'll give more love to your feet, ankles, and calves, and it just it just complements so well with different kettlebell complexes. You can do uh, any pretty much any complex you want. You know I have a million here. You can also go to 101kettlebellworkouts.com to get 101 kettlebell complexes, and you can just jump rope between sets. You know, being a little bit more active between sets is awesome. Here's another thing you can do with jump rope. This is a really good way to uh to utilize the jump rope and that is try to work up to 60 seconds of single leg jump rope that is awesome for building uh your calves and your feet and ankle strength uh so yeah standard jump rope's great you know alternating hops all those variations but i think if you really want to um uh, uh build your calves up and stuff do the do the single leg uh uh efforts Extended single leg efforts uh, up to 60 seconds. Ooh, it burns, baby. It burns. Okay, so that's the second limitation. That's how you address it. Jump rope, easy. You can obviously just run and stuff too. Uh, and I'm actually quite a fan of that, running, sprinting, all that. Uh, but for talking equipment, uh, jump rope is a nice addition. Okay, third and final limitation I want to talk about is the horizontal push. Now, look, I know you can do floor presses. And I actually kind of like floor presses. Um, in fact... Uh, I like a specific variation of the floor press, and that's with a hip bridge. So you, you get on the ground, you kind of roll the kettlebell into a bench press position, you squeeze the glutes, you bridge the hips up, and it turns into a sort of decline bench press. That's about as good as it gets with the kettlebell. Uh, but the, the floor press is a bit awkward for people. Uh, since you're against the floor, it, the range of motion is a bit limited. Uh, that's why I like to do the hip bridge. It kind of lets you increase range of motion a little bit. So, you know, if you have nothing else, uh, I do recommend doing that, uh, and, and don't get me wrong, it's it's fine, but I still think this is it's limited enough with kettlebell training that it, it merits a, it merits another option here. So, what is that option? Oh, it's push ups. Just do push ups, of course. <laughs> you don't even need another piece of equipment. Just do lots and lots of push ups. All the push up variations, you'll have your horizontal pushing pretty much covered. Standard push ups, close grip, wide grip. Dive bomber push-ups. I'm a big fan of push-ups and push-up variations. And of course, once you want to get more serious with strength, start moving towards the one-arm push-ups. Now, the other potential solution is if you got the the tower, the the pull-up and dip tower, uh, you could kind of uh, fill two of these gaps with one stone or piece of equipment or whatever. Because then you can do dips as well for the. I, I classify dips actually as horizontal. Um, uh, pushing. Uh, and I love, love me, my dips. Uh, dips are one of my favorite exercises. So I actually think it's worth it. Uh, some of those, those tower units are not that expensive. I don't have one personally. Cause I, I, we go to the local Y. So I just use it when I'm there. Uh, but if we didn't, if we didn't, uh, go to a gym, uh, I do a lot of my training at home, but some of my training, uh, that, that uses stuff other than kettlebells, I time that with when I'm actually going to the gym. But if I was doing it all at home, I would have a kettlebell. I would have one of those tower structures with the pull-ups uh, and the dip features. I would have a jump rope. And then, of course, here comes the final one, the ab wheel. You know we love the ab wheel. And none of these things are super expensive. If you, if you forget the tower and you just do uh, 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 a door frame pull-up bar, um, a jump rope and an ab wheel, shoot, like I, that's not – that's. That's not going to hurt your wallet too much. You can find very affordable options of all those. The tower units are a little bit more expensive, but dang, that's pretty good. And if you have, you know, that in combination with the kettlebells, now you have, to my mind, the complete 
fitness minimalist training package. Now you really are going to cover pretty much all the bases in terms of the different movement patterns and the different uh, methods and modalities of training. You're going to have it all covered. So while we are big fans of, of minimalism, um, we have to remember that minimalism is about effectiveness and efficiency. It's not just doing very little for the sake of doing very little. Sometimes it makes sense to do a little bit more. We love kettlebells, but we should always be realistic that any modality has its limitations. I've tried to identify some of the major limitations of kettlebell training for you here today. Vertical pulling, horizontal pushing, and uh, a failure to give sufficient love to our feet, ankles, and calves. And the easy solutions are a pull-up bar, a jump rope, and uh, push-ups, all the push-ups. Okay, I hope this video helped. If you guys, uh, I, in fact, I'd like to hear from you. Is there a limitation that I missed? What other limitation uh, have you encountered in kettlebell training? Uh, please comment that below, but then also comment what you did to fill that gap. What was that limitation? And what did you find was a good supplement uh, to address that? Please, I'd love to hear from you. Comment below. We'll catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.